Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is distance in the coordinate plane. Let's go ahead and get started with this most awesome lesson here. Here's our, our common course strand for our groovy teachers. And then how can we use absolute value to find the distance between uh, two points with the same X or Y coordinates, okay? So we're going to save the absolute value for when we get to distance form. Now just remember distance is always positive. Yeah, I cannot walk negative three miles. I always walk positive three miles. Our distance is always positive. So let's first talk about reflecting. You guys, reflecting the, in the coordinate plane. A point of a, on a coordinate plane, your x and y axes, that's what that is, uh, can be reflected across an axis. The reflection is located on the opposite side of the axis at the same distance, okay? So go ahead and draw that coordinate plane and always label your x axis. It's the horizontal axis and label the y axis that's your vertical axis. And I went down this negative 7, positive 7, negative 7, positive 7. And I just labeled them by, you know, just the 2's and negative 2's are there to show you that each square represents one unit. So go ahead and do that. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and um, uh, graph 3, negative 2. Okay, so 3, negative 2, the first number tells us left or right. If it's positive, we go to the right. The second number tells us up or down. This is negative, so we go down. So we're going to go to the right, 3, down, 2. Okay, so to the right, 3, down, 2. I'll plot it right there. And then it says reflect this over the y-axis and write the new ordered pair. So here's the y-axis. This is our mirror. Let's go ahead and graph that point real quick. Now we're going to go ahead and reflect it over the y-axis. So, so whatever the distance is to the y-axis, do the same distance on this side. So it's going to be over here. And so this point is to the left, 3, down, 2. So it's going to be at, at negative 3 negative 2 right there. Okay, so there it is right there. All right, now it says um, uh, now graph uh, 3, negative 2 uh, across the x-axis and write its ordered new pair. So here's the x-axis. So just go straight towards the x-axis. Whatever that distance we did, we go straight uh, past it. So the same distance is 2. So we go up 2 and then up 2 more to get into um, uh, this is going to have the ordered pair over 3, up 2. So 3, positive 2 right there. Okay. All right, now this says, what if we reflected the original point, 3, negative 2, over one axis and then reflected it over the other axis? Where would it go? Well, let's do the first one. We go over the y-axis and then take this point right here and go take this over the x-axis. It's going to go right here. What about if we went over the x-axis first and then over the y-axis? It takes us to the same point right here. And this order pair is going to be at to the left 3, so negative 3 up 2, so negative 3, positive 2 right there. Okay, so there it is right there. Where's the, where would that be? It's in quadrant, remember, it goes, um, uh, it's in quadrant 2, by the way, but this is quadrant 1, Q1, quadrant 2, Q2, Q3, Q4. Okay, all right, so what is the relationship between the, the, the coordinates of a point and the coordinates of its reflection across each axis? Okay, so when we first did this, you guys, we, we had um, uh, this graph right here. Whoops, I, I drew the wrong graph. I thought I fixed that. Gosh darn it, I did. I just didn't save it. Let me go back and fix this guy right here. This should be, I have the right ordered pair. This should be right there. Sorry about that. Did you guys see that? Sorry, sorry. And then so what I'm going to do is just um, uh, I'm going to grab uh, that graph and just copy that on top of that, okay? So when we reflect it over the you see me doing my tricks and stuff. Okay, so this old graph is no good right here. So, so let's do this first, you guys. Okay, so this is our new our new graph right here. Okay, so what's the relationship between um, if we reflect it over the um, come on there ah there we go. I know what I did. I left that in there when I took that picture. Wonder what I did wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, let me fix that. I'll do that again. Here we go. Sorry, my little delay. Does your math teacher ever make mistakes? I make them all the time in my class, and my kids love to tell me about them. Don't you love to tell your our teachers when they make a mistake? My students sure do. Okay, anyway, so um, this one says, what happened when we reflected that over? Ah, I didn't mean to do that again. I meant to go grab my little cursor right here. So you can see where I'm pointing. Oh, delays, delays. Okay, here we go. So if we reflected the original point over the x-axis, what happened with the ordered pairs? This 
3, negative 2 became negative 3, negative 2. So the negative 2's didn't change, the y's didn't change, but the x's changed. So when we go across the y-axis, the x's change right there, okay? So we're going to get uh, uh, this ordered pair. Okay, so, and I'm going to say this right here, you guys. So when we go over um, uh, the, sorry, let me grab that again, copy. Sorry, I thought I had this fixed. Okay, when we go across, um, uh, when we go across uh, the y-axis, the x's are opposite each other. Okay, so when we go across the y-axis right here, the th the three became negative three. The negative two stayed the same. So that we have the same y. So we write this in in our uh, integrated math one class. Our x y becomes opposite x y or negative x y. Okay, and when we go across the x-axis, what changes? See how the 3 stay the same, but the negative 2s don't stay the same? They change, so the y's change when we go across the, um, uh, the, the x-axis, okay? So that's what we're going to say right there, okay? All right, so this next part says, uh, uh, what happens if we reflect it over one axis and then it goes over another axis? So what are the relationships between this point and this point? So 3 becomes negative 3. Negative 2 becomes positive 2. So they both change. So they both become opposite x and opposite y right there, or, or uh, negative x, negative y. Okay, so the original x, y becomes uh, negative x, negative y right there. All right, let me go grab that. I'm going to carry this throughout the rest of the lesson. helps me uh, point things out to you guys. Okay, so here we go. It says um, uh, find each distance. So, so what we're going to do is just count up the squares, you guys. So the distance from A to B, just count the squares. If they're vertical squares or vertical points and horizontal points, all you got to do is count the squares between them. So here's one square, two, three, four, five. So it's that easy, guys. It's just going to be five. Your book is suggesting doing absolute value. I don't think it's worth it to start doing that just yet, not until we get distance formula. Distance formula would be like between uh, D and A or D and B when we don't have a vert or horizontal lines and we don't have vertical lines. Okay, and that's later in integrated math three. So or integrated math one, sorry. So let's just count the squares. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the distance between A and B is five. How about between D and C? Just count them. One, two, three, four. So that distance is going to be four. Okay. So the distance from A to B is five, and the distance from D to C is is four right there. Okay. It's that easy. All right. So how about these guys? Okay. So find the distance between each pair of these points. Well, let's graph these guys, you guys. Okay. So so here. Um, uh, let's see. I'm going to put this back down here. Okay. So here, um, uh, let's go ahead and graph to the left four up three, to the right five up three. So to the left, 4, up 3, there's E, and then to the right, 5, up 3, there's F right there. So just count those squares. What's the distance between those guys right there? So let's just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay? And if we can see, the Y's are the same, so we just what's the distance between negative 4 and positive 5? It's 9, okay? Distance is always positive, so it's 9, okay? All right, and then uh, how about from uh, G to, to H, okay? Um, they have the uh, same X coordinate of 0, so here's G, which is at 0, negative 6, and H is at 0, uh, 4, okay? So how, what's the distance from here? So here's 4 units, here's 6 units, so that distance is going to be 10 units right there, okay? Easy enough. All right, your book does other things. I, I don't think it's needed at this moment, you guys. So you'll see why when we get into um, uh, when we can't do uh, count the squares. We got to do distance formula, which is not in this class. All right, so the coordinate plane represents a map. Each grid on this uh, map represents 20 miles, so every square is 20 miles. A retail company has warehouses at, at points M and N. So how long does it take a truck a truck that travels 40 miles per hour to travel from warehouse M to warehouse N. Well, first of all, we got to find out what's the distance between these pair of points. So remember, each square is 20. Can we count by 20s? So I'm just going to go look. They're horizontal right here, and we're going halfway in the middle of each square. So here's 20, 40, 60, 80, 
100, 120. So there's 120 miles between M and N, okay? So, um, so if that uh, truck goes 40 miles per hour, then we take 120 and we divide it by 40, and that's going to take that truck three hours, roughly three hours. Sometimes they'll go a little bit more than 40, sometimes a little bit less, but they're probably saying an average of 40 miles per hour. Okay, let's do this, you guys. So a store is located at uh, P, which is at 50, negative 30. How long will it take that truck driving at 50 miles per hour? So it must be a cleaner road or not so windy uh, per hour to drive from warehouse N to the store N. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph that 50, negative 30. Now notice these guys are both horizontal or vertical lines right here there so we just got to count them so first of all how many miles is it 20 40 it's 40 miles from uh, the store at P to the warehouse at N right there so this truck so we're gonna take that 40 and we're gonna go um, uh, we're gonna divide that by uh, 50 right here okay so let's go ahead and do that so oh, well, my computer's acting weird right now so 40 divided by 50 is the same as 40 over 50 the zeros cancel and then four fifths is eight tenths, so it'd be going to be eight tenths of an hour, okay? Because it's going miles per hour. Now, if we wanted to figure out how many minutes, since there's 60 uh, minutes per hour right there, then we take 60 and we multiply it times uh, 0.8. Now, I know 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 60 is 480, so 0.8 times 60 is 48.0, so 48 minutes, okay? So either 8 tenths of an hour, which is 0.8, or 48 minutes. All right, you guys, I hope that lesson made sense, even when my computer was acting weird. Take care.